Hello and welcome to episode 34 of the Take a Poll podcast. It is an away day, our first away day and one of our few away days uh, that we're yeah. going to have. Uh, we are previewing the Irish weights for the upcoming Cheltenham Festival in a fortnight's time. Very much looking forward to this one. Uh, Declan Carroll, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. Looking forward to this. And uh, thanks very much for all the effort you've put in over the last couple of days ah, to obviously. get it ready. Yeah, we were that's... Up, up late last night. Uh, up late but it's, it's all worth it we've hopefully found a few winners that's the main thing um but yeah no get even getting text messages or you, you were getting text messages they asked him for clan mail which was probably the best bit yeah um, I, I think it's called achieved and people are disappointed now that we're uh looking ahead to cheltenham when there's exactly. the and clan mail is on tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> yeah but look don't worry we've a few nuggets from clan mail at the end of the show and i'm sure you do deck anyway um, there. Yeah, I was, I was busy enough getting this one ready, but I will uh, regurgitate my tip for Sunday because he does have an entry, which is the main thing. I said on a few taps ago, but I will repeat at the end of the show uh, for anyone that may have missed that. So, Declan, we're going to go in chronological order, um, handicaps only. We were only covering the Irish horses here. That doesn't mean we don't fancy any English horses, but you'll find us on other podcasts to get our thoughts on this. This is basically a, a podcast previewing what the handicapper has done and has not done to certain horses um in the nine handicaps uh, one two three four five six, yeah nine handicaps available uh the ultimate handicap chase the boodles coral cup grand annual pretends plate kim muir county hurdle and the martin pipe we'll start straight away deck with the ultimate handicap chase over three miles the first handicap on the tuesday so as you can see here this is our allotment of irish entrance and um, obviously those of you guys who are listening in audio i will try to be as articulate and as descriptive as possible here and um, obviously because you don't have the the video in front of you so the best place usually i would th think to start deck is the horses with one entry so we've ain't that a shame braun bustleton eclat de re jevry max charm manella cocooner and uh, or sorry manella crooner i think is it no, Manella yeah. Kakuna, my bad, and the Goffer. So they're probably the ones that we will very much likely see in this race. And then we've some other horses, um, you know, that we'll have to wait with bated breath to see. Um, a lot of these obviously have a national, uh, potential grand national targets uh, shortly after this race. Not usually a race deck that the Irish tend to get overly involved in, um, usually because the Irish grand national or the Aintree national itself is the target. However, there is one horse near the top of the weights that I personally like, uh, the Goffer, but I will speak about him in a minute. But who do you like uh, for the ultimate handicap, Jay Stack? Yeah, it, it can be difficult to, you know, um, to get right who, who's going to come here. I think Stumptown will. Um, he's won here this year already. He won in January. He was just touched off in the Kim Moore off 135 last year when he um, he was outstayed by Angel Stone. He didn't enjoy Newbury at all in the old Hennessy and as i said like he was an easy winner off 142 here in january he's still only a seven year old he's in and off 148 so he's not running in the kim more this year um but i i look there's, there's one well there's two that's jumping out but there's one that i really really like here if he does turn up and i'm hoping he comes here because he'd have to carry 12 stone in the kim more and that's i know the way you're thinking um mm. he's only a six year old he was second in two beginners um to Faso Vega and then Gaelic Warrior before he was toured in the grade one behind Gaelic Warrior and Illetay Toms. Uh, he ran his first handicap off 144 at Leopardstown and I'd say that's done him the world of good. He would have really, really needed that. That's the first handicap of his life. He finished ninth. He made some mistakes. His jumping's going to be much sharper for that, I think. And uh, I think he's going to come on immensely. If he does turn up here, I think he'd take a bit of stopping. Um, the, the other one who could be dangerous is Jungle Buggy or Jungle Boogie. He is a 10 year old, but he's only had five career starts. Mm. It was a big, big performance in um, the album photo race at Tremor on New Year's Day. His only defeat came in the Hilly Way back in this November or December. I think it's December, the Hilly Way. Yeah, um, he was beat 14 lengths by El Fabiolo and uh, Fidor was second. This would be his handicap debut, but he's a Gold Cup entry, and I'm not surprised he's a Gold Cup entry because uh, he he should have been a proper Grade One staying chaser. But look, he's obviously had his issues. He's ten now. 
a handicap, you know, he definitely has the winning of a handicap. Um, although he's he's not as experienced as some of the, some of the others, I just mm. thought that was a big big performance the last day. But I'd be very very keen on I know the way you're thinking. Off one four five, yeah. Like, look, um, as you said, he's a six year old. He's plenty of time on his side, and and the fact that he had the, his first ever handicap run of his life, anyone that would listen to us would know that usually one run in a handicap would be quite essential before we kind of go for one in a over here anyway and it would be similar enough as well it doesn't matter of the of the grade um just going to re-put up the uh some of the weight amendments there um so the few that i like deck um obviously i, I was talking about the goffer now he was a really good fourth in the race last year um mm. now last year was a very much a almost an anomaly like Corrick rambler beat faster slow like it was a really really um yeah it was a, it was a high class renewal. renewal it was a high class renewal and if you remember from one of our very first taps the, I, I the golfer up as a horse to potentially follow yeah um i had him down as a tritown horse he never got the entry he ran in a monster national uh, he ran in a Kerry national um i think he was fancied for both he was definitely fancy for the monster national um but then you know didn't run overly well Um, he was staying on but was never dangerous uh, he ran basically like there was another day in mind um and it's it's quite apparent now he's been trained to the minute for this race uh gordon elliott is putting him back um putting him back here this is a race that usually uh repeat offenders can run well in obviously mm -hmm. Cork rambler is one of two years on the spin uh i think on temper two for david pipe one of two years on the spin uh cloudy oh, was a cloudy dream I think he he ran it about four times then won it on his fifth attempt or maybe ran it three times won it on his fourth attempt so it is a race that uh, repeat offenders can go very very well in and i think that stands to the gopher i'd be quite sweet in him now and he's been kind of well found though like he's right up the top of the market um, hey, he's how much higher is he than the run last year yeah so he's one he's he's in off one four seven uh which would be three pounds higher than his chase mark in ireland uh last season um, and bear in mind the caliber of horses that he did finish behind was very very high and um, mm. he's beaten 11 lengths he was actually off 149 that day so he's two pounds lower um but as i said there, sh there really shouldn't be anything of faster slower core ramblers uh ability in relative to their handicap marks at that stage in the race this season um it, it would just be very very rare it happened two years in a row so that's why i quite like the gopher and as well still only a seven year old as well uh deck there's one horse i wanted to bring up which i don't want to put you on the spot right now but uh we were both very keen on glen for the thyestes and we does have an entry here is it would it possibly be the heavy ground and and coming to an ultimate that would maybe put you off or do you think he had his chance at going i think he goes to the plate because maybe right, okay. he, he was outstayed in um mm. he hit he hit the front after the last mm. and maybe just didn't get home Har say he didn't get home he was outstayed definitely outstayed so I'd imagine he goes to the plate. Yeah, by a horse we thought wouldn't stay. <laughs> Ain't that a shame? Who is in here as well, I believe. Um, or maybe he's not, actually. Um, let's check. Oh, no, he is. Yeah, 152, 10-year-old now. I think he's had his day in the sun, though. Like He owed people a lot of money before that that race at Gowron, and um, he's got it now, but I think he'd be finding it hard to to probably win off 152, he would have thought. Uh, just before we move on, Deck, I did want to just mention on the ropes as well, um a horse that actually we quite liked at nice uh, about two or three years ago before he got yeah. injured um i thought he actually went well for a long way in the thyestes before pulling up quite late on and ground he probably may not have been an absolute love with i'd be very interested to see if he goes here to kim Muir, um and just to see who rides him because you know he's still with chiefly park that he's the type of horse he could have offloaded or sold and he went well enough in the in the thyestes to suggest ability is still there um, and I'd be very interested to see if if he did rock up to Cheltenham because it would I think it would highlight some intent if they did run him. He's a thirty three to one shot for this race, but he's probably the type of horse he could back on the day. Like he's not going to be like, unless the Chiefly Park colours people start latching onto him blind. But he doesn't have a profile of one that you'd be backing with confidence. Not anti post anyway, but he is one that I might look at on the day. Uh, but for me, it's definitely the Goffer for the Ultima deck, and you're sticking with the the six year old. Is it? I know the way you're thinking. Yeah, yeah. I think it'd be very hard to beat if he turns up. It's but 
he wouldn't be torn up if he was mine if he got to the Irish national. <laughs> I mean, say that about nearly any stage, Chase. Yeah. Be, I'll probably go to the Irish national. Look at the national hunt, Chase. Obviously, we're not covering that. There's only about four or five runners in that because the Irish national yeah. is so close this year. Uh, Willie's even taken out the majority of his runners. So, um, yeah, well, well, let's move on then, Deck. Uh, next up is the Boodles Juvenile Handicap Hurdle. Um, a race that you said to me you could not wait to get, to get <laughs> stuck into, which I couldn't believe. Uh, incredibly rare uh, that we've turned you into someone that, that loves four-year-old hurdlers. Um, but anyway, here is the um, list of runners and horses that have been, some have been harshly treated Others have been uh, left alone. So like the English handicapper and Irish handicapper this season, it looks like they have, um, they've kind of maybe gotten the phone to each other is probably the best way to say it before yeah. the issue and marks. So we see differences of zero, but the majority of these horses didn't have marks in Ireland. Um, and as a result, they're they're coming here with, with this mark. So there is technically no difference, but I'd say there is long chats over maybe, you know, Batman, Girac, um, you know, even hey whatever who obviously is 102 he's probably a better chance of getting into area 51 than he does getting into this race off that mark but they've obviously had conversations um owes patir as well with his mark of 126 um deck this is the race you probably spent the most amount of time on <laughs> so yeah. i'm very very interested to hear what you think of the boodles juvenile handicap hurdle go ahead uh, look most years um i couldn't tell you who was running in this race but since we started this back in october i've actually really enjoyed following the um the, the juveniles this season i thought it's been really really interesting i think we've a, a really competitive crop look i, I know some of them they, they do look harsh the the marks they've got um after the british handicapper but it doesn't always really matter with with these juveniles i find you know um they they're they're these are finding improvement all at different rates so it, it can be very very tricky um but i do think eagles rain getting four pound is harsh he is an he's a brilliant jumper he's like a cat mm -hmm. and i've been so impressed with him since his the time around at cork uh he's just come on and he's jumped so well um he stayed really well at punchestown on new year's day i think it was um a Jiggenstown horse won the race. It might have been Storm Hart, is it? It was um, Storm Hart, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Storm he Hart. made a mistake. He was he was hampered that day, wasn't he? He he I was believe, hampered yeah. and he made a mistake and he ran on really, really well. Uh Ginny Macaroni reversed the former and but he's reversing it again. Um like he was previously ahead of Ginny Macaroni and he, he will be the next time. But it is it look he, he it it might suit him. It's gonna be an end to end gallop and I, I can see him placing, uh, I can see him running on past beating horses and just outstaying a lot of a, a, a lot of them. Um, he, I think he's a, he's a decent each way bet, but I can't see him winning it. Um, what do was in here, do you think she'll run? She was the one, so this was the only race deck where I didn't put up only entry because the majority have only yeah. one entry here. So as you can see the ticker going along the bottom of the screen, um, I've included where she is entered. I believe Wadu is entered in the Triumph Hurdle. And I think she's yeah. entered in the Mare's Novice Hurdle as well. Um, and obviously the Boodles. She's short as price for the Boodles. She's around a 7 or 8 to 1 chance. Um, she, she'd have to have her chance though. I I like I would. I thought maybe if it wasn't... If Gordon didn't have brighter days ahead, I think they might have taken her chance getting away in the Mare's Novice Hurdle. But She, she wouldn't have get, got a lot of weight though because she's one graded races so... She'd yeah, she'd have a penalty yeah. as well. So she'd have penalties, but, yeah. And I actually think I think she's been really well placed. I do think she's mm. a good horse, but I think she's been really well placed. And I think she'll begin to hear at the weights. Definitely with Cossack Shack, anyway. With Cossack Shack and mm. um and Norbert well, Norbert Green, Norbert Green goes to the Triumph. He's the best yeah. juvenile in Ireland. Um but <laughs> even on ratings he could be. I think he is Sorry. actually on ratings. He is on ratings as well. I think one thirty one three nine. I think he's the highest rated juvenile in Ireland as well. Yeah, sure. I told you that back in November, though, you know? <laughs> you did, yeah. Um, yeah, look, I think she's up against it, but particularly with uh, Cossack Shack. Eagle Fang, you know, I'm a massive fan of. Um, he was beating yep. Penn Lens in, in a great deal of Christmas. He was second to Fratas, who I really, really like. Can't wait to see again, but I'm beginning to wonder if we see her this season again now. Um, and hands-on. God knows how good hands-on is. is. 
and um, mm. that was early on in the season he won at nice last week and the race it, it's a rated a rated novice for fire alls that um has become a, a really really good trial for this race look the, the, the three i think to have the best chance of winning it um the fourth one's cossack shack he was the next second to um would do given a three pound that was after a really bad mistake at the, the second last uh he was seven and six in the grade two at christmas he gave way to all of them but no ring he's had three runs and um, he's beat that jet by eight lengths now that share seems to have regressed since um the horse has gone to seemingly britain yeah but like was a good line of farm early on in the season Um willie's philly career the blaze uh she was a winner in france her Irish debut was in the grade two and then she was two lengths behind miss manzor the last day off levels she was one length ahead of nadawi who i think is probably the worst handicapped horse in this field <laughs> there's there's a few that could have that accolade in this race but i, I can yeah. go through them right, I mean, there is a few horrendous looking yeah i don't write in that at all um she got two pound uh she's 127 here uh, nadawi's 134 and and miss manzor's one 130 i think korea the place has a, a really good chance at the weights and i said this coming up to uh the drf i was part here He's in here off 126. On paper, it's probably harsh, but he's been buried in, in graded races. Like, he was keen early on in his jumping career. He was very, very keen. But since he mm. settled, he's been buried in the grade two, right out the back in the grade one. The same thing. The handicapper I, hasn't really missed him, but I think he's a, like he's going to take a massive step forward here. It, the winner's between the three of them for me. Yeah, I. It looks like the handicapper from from what I've seen form wise, he's given Calaconti five pounds. Uh, Norberg Ring's gotten the three. Um, it, it's he's, he's seemingly targeted the grade two ran on Stevens's day or Boxing Day. That's the race that seemingly he wants to go through. Uh, Cossack Chak off one thirty and Batman Jarak off one thirty three. That would kind of solidify that. Um. Yeah, and as you said, like I don't think Batman Jarak is the best handicapped horse of one thirty three. Like he's a six to one shot. He's a psycho. He never he can't settle. Um, so they're gonna have to ride him, uh, you know, as cold as the Arctic Circle, um, which with you know it's usually not a bad tactic in the Boodles, but you'd be asking for a lot of luck. Um, and he's trading around six seven to one. Um, I can't see a Philly, um, heading the weights. I think that would be a, a bit mad. So I would imagine Carla Conti. She, she'll either skip Cheltenham or will go to the Triumph. Norberg Ring's already gone to the Triumph, so I'm 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 assuming Liari's going to head the weights. He's another probably, you know, harshly looking treated horse, but that's Paul Nichols. We'll, we'll st- save him for next week. Um, Milan Tino as well dropped, 20, yeah. dropped 10 pounds. Uh, big talking point there this week. Um, and then the one thing I was a bit confused by, Deck, the one horse that had probably shown its hand the most, the one with probably, the, I think, the most runs in the field, uh, Pigeon House, who is you know kind of the the yardstick, he's had eight starts over hurdles, and um, so he's clearly been shown the most, um, and he's been put up five pounds. So yeah. that's I was kind of struggling to get where that five pounds came from. Um, like he's a thirty, er, he's a thirty three to one shot, so I wouldn't have thought he'd have much up his sleeve with, after eight hurdle starts, especially in the I, I, so, I, I think he's actually showed his hand. Like he hasn't just yeah. run eight times. He's Shown what he's, he's been placed there. many of those times. I think he's been second yeah. at least five. Um, yeah, like I think he's, yeah, there, there's, there's, he's not mm. going to be a surprise here. Like, I, I think that's harsh as well. Yeah, very harsh. Um, I'm off a similar enough hymn sheet to you, Deck. Obviously, Eagle Fang, um, a former nap at the top a couple of weeks ago, um, <laughs> and uh, you know, won the kind of main trial for this race at Nace, as you said, as well. Um, like. You can't discount him at around twelve to one, and because he's probably trained with Bill Dirk, and people are you know ignoring him, but that would be a pretty crazy thing to do. His, his form is very, very solid, and obviously you said you like Fratos. She still carries you know some nice entries, and hopefully we will see her. Um, Nadawi looks horrendously handicapped. Batman yeah. Jarak, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, wouldn't trust him. And the one I did come down on, and it's a horse that again he's been a, a good friend of the show for quite a while now. Was Cossack Shack, uh, rated one thirty probably still fair to say he's learning his trade he's only had four starts in his life um ran 
a quiet race in a Curra Maiden, uh, won on his hurdling debut uh, at Killarney, as you said, was thrown out. I don't know, actually, no, wasn't thrown out against Wadu, but was no, only Norbert went down Green by was. a neck. Yeah, it was Norbert Green that was that, that was thrown out. Um, he that race at Down Royal, like I'm pretty sure he headed the filly and just. You know, he, he clattered it. I think he nearly came down at the second last. Yeah, and he's still he nearly won. Badly, yeah. mm. I and he was giving her a little bit of weight that day. I don't think it was the full seven pounds, but like they're both three. off. Yeah, they're both off one hundred and thirty. So he beats yeah. her. Um, and I, as I said, I can't trust Batman Jarak, and they're very closely weighted together. I would much, much quicker to trust Cossack Shack. Uh, he's around a fourteen to one shot. I'd be happy enough to go with him. Um, looking down the field, I'm not sure really, you know, there, there's nothing really that, that really sticks out to me. But I will say Eagles Rain, Russell Sullivan's horse, I, I know you mentioned him as well, Deck. I thought that was a really good effort at punches down, and it's probably because he showed his hand in a handicap a little bit. The handicapper's given him a little bit more. Uh, Tom Harney's going to be able to claim a seven, though. Um, he, he was. Tom has rolled him now, so, mm, you know, yeah. he, he's still claiming the same seven he had been claiming. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But it's still, at least, you know, the jockey knows him. Um, we don't know how strong the form is quite yet. Uh, Trank will see. I don't think it's been seen since. But like, he he's, uh, prob probably wins tomorrow. All right, okay, all right. Well, more on that later. Um, <laughs> but look, if you think he wins tomorrow, and we're dealing with a thirty-three to one shot in the build, will start one last time out. Like, there's worse. I think he's a good each way, bay. I think worst he's still to. I think it, it, the way they go is going to suit him and he'll definitely be running on. He'll be staying yeah. on past beating horses. Yeah, um, and again, he's not one you need to back anti-post. He's one that you could probably back. Right now, he's 33 to 1. You'll probably you get 40 or 50 to 1 on the day yeah. if you're lucky. Um, and you so get he's one bases and all sorts. 100%. So he's one that I'd definitely uh, recommend if you see him dec declared, which I don't see why you wouldn't. Um, but well, he goes. Chuck, he goes. Yeah, yeah, he goes. That's I mean, Obviously, with Keon Dan in the yard, of course. Uh, that that's that's good to know. Um, but as well, Cossack Shack, fourteen to one. Um, I could see a few quid for him on the day for sure. Uh, nice form, really really likable. Uh, sound enough jumper. I know he did make that mistake at Down Royal, like you said. But um, is he at Churchill? Is he? Or? He, of course, he is. Yeah, I, I do love the Churchill's hurdling as well. Of yeah, you know your script riders, your uh, comfort zones, etc. Like he's a he is a nice um, yeah he, he has a nice jump sire as well as a very good flat sire. So. Um, yeah, no, Cossack Shock for me. You'll be off a similar enough him sheet deck, yeah? Yeah, look, I, I those three I mentioned, Cossack Shack, uh, Corita Blaze, and Owls Park here. I can see the winner come from the three of them, but I, I've seen Cossack Shack a long, long time as well. So, you have, yeah, you have. You, know, you have to stick with him. back to, you know, the, the top one or two. He, yeah. he might have, yeah, did he run on top? He was down to run one of the very early he's, tops, and and mm. he was a non-runner. Um, we both fancied but, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were mm. keen on him. So, I look. If you were to pick one, I'd probably be siding with him because I'm I'm saying it a long, long time. Fair right enough. Fair enough. All right then. Well, Deck, we'll move on to Wednesday, the Coral Cup. Um, so this is the first race where we have a minus. Um, Priory Dancer actually dropped a pound by British Handicapper, so Joseph O'Brien must be doing a little jig there from 139 to yeah, 138. Well, his last run was in Carlisle, so... That's, yeah, that's probably the, the point, yeah. Now that does make sense. That was a pretend qualifier, I'm pretty sure. And that's probably where he goes, because he did qualify, didn't he? I think he did. He was um, toward a fart that day. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Well, it'll be more on that later. Um, right, so... Un unsurprisingly deck with the coral cup very very few horses here with the single entries like if you're if you're able to run the coral cup you're able to run most likely in the martin pipe and um, if you're able to run in those races you're probably able to run the county and who knows you might even be pretense qualified or in some novices cases you might have grade one entries in the novice division and um, or even some up the top of the weights might be even in the stairs hurdle so litter of entries here for a lot of these horses uh, the only three in the field with one entry um, as you can see there, Brazil for Pora Grouch, former Boodles winner. Hidden Valley Lake, uh, the Bine Hurdle winner at Navin uh, the other week. And a horse who, unfortunately, has been pretty disappointing this year. And a horse we have a lot of time for, the Devil's Coachman, Noel Mead. Uh, probably should have ran here last year, but didn't. Um, after he won the Bine Hurdle, I'm pretty sure himself. Uh, but the snuggiest. I think that was the year short, before, was it? It might have been the year before, possibly. I could be getting them mixed up. But anyway, um, where I would like to start here, Deck, is with Martin Brazel. Um, the last two years he's been mugged in this race, uh, faster, slow, 
was mugged by commander of fleet um, in treacherous conditions in 2022 and then an epic song was mugged by langer dan last year i backed them both i'm still sick over both um but he seems to have a different route this year for a horse that i think will run here over the martin pipe built by ballymore with his two entries um the difference between him and martin brussels last two carl cup runners he is coming here off the back of two wins Mm. while an epic song and faster slow were buried in the liffy and um came here with kind of unknown profiles both of them very well backed on the day um and both just came up short but built by ballymore like there's every chance he's a graded hurdler by the way he by what he showed um in my opinion anyway the last day like i thought he was very impressive the last day uh but deck where are you going with the coral cup i'm a very much a built by ballymore fan um but I know that you have a few farm lines you'd like to discuss with us here. Yeah, no, I like him too. Like he bowled up the last thing, he carried 12 stone. Um, mm. and he's won his, his maiden at Limerick before that. Yeah, you're right, it is a different route. Um, I can I, I do think he's a, a really, really good chance. Um Jigger was a horse and I've I've got a lot of time for he was second to mystical power, looking like the winner turning in. I'm not sure he'd get the trip, and I can see him going really really well in the county so we'll probably discuss him a bit more later okay. uh queen of bourbon he's two from two in ireland he stays yeah. really well well there's nothing sexy about him but i could see him maybe going better in the martin pipe than than in this even though they can be identical races um what's up darling look you can probably make an ar- an argument through farm lines through um answer the cave he's a seven-year-old the one i'm really 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 keen on here is, is a five-year-old western fold and um, he's got mm-hmm. seven pound but he's only a, a five-year-old he could have anything up a sleeve uh he was 15 lengths off uh waterford whispers off 12 stone um he he hammered the art the art giving him weight yeah you know there's there's lots to like about western fold the, the fact he's only a five-year-old as well I'm so keen on him if he turns up here. Um, I think. He's a 40 to 1 shot, uh, which <laughs> is quite wild. And he's 30 trees for the Martin Pipe. So I think people are looking at that seven pounds. It was seven pounds he got, was it? He's seven pounds off the British mm. handicapper. So I, I don't mm. have. Um, what, yeah, he's, one, he's off 140. Here. He's off 140 here. So 133 yeah. to 140. Now, what I would say, though, about the handicapper lashing horses out mm. of it, there's two ways you look at it. You go seven pounds that's an absolute disgrace and you don't back the horse which is fair enough if you wanted to be a bit more optimistic about it there's a stra- strain of form in western folds you know uh in his resume that the handicapper obviously rates very highly and it's the handicapper's f- job to go on the form that he rates highly to uh, assess them accordingly so do you, do you have any hint deck to what that piece of form might be? Do you think it was just because he was so impressive at Down Royal and his age, or maybe is he taking that fairy house race into account uh, a little Are bit? Are you more hoping later? he's taking that fairy house race? Into I account? think he is, but when you look, yeah. when you when you think about it, out loud, again, we'll we'll get to it a little bit later. But that it fairy house race, race, it seems to have, it seems to have perked the handicappers ears up. The form is solid. Um, mm. I'm not worried about seven pound because the five year old. It's not, mm. he's not seven or eight and, and he's shown us a lot or, or there's less improvement in him. He's only a five-year-old, yeah. you know. I, I think he takes some stopping now if, if he turns up here and in the farm he, he was in the last day. You don't know how well he was going at, you know, or how close he was going to go at Leopardstown when, when he fell. Um, yeah, strong race as well. Champagne Admiral and mm. Waterford Whispers was second. So maybe he's giving him five for the fairy house and two for that one. <laughs> all behind Waterford Whispers. Um mm. but he was impressive the last day. Just because of his age, the seven pound is not putting me off at all. Yeah. I didn't and realize he was actually forty to one. Yeah, you know, he's a huge price. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um I, I gotta go back him before we air this. <laughs> well that's the main thing. Are you gonna back him for this or the Martin Piper both? Like he is he's the type of price that you can back him for both. Look, you know, I know we get to the Martin Pipe later, but we're we're very, very keen on one and there's others as well he'll be liking that but yeah yeah like i'm hoping he comes here because 
they're not coming here. Yeah. And yeah, exactly. It, like <laughs> exactly. if he comes here, I'm I'd be very, very keen on him. Right, very good. Well, there you go. 33, 40 to 1, depending on where you look. But um look, you're not gonna get much more than that, and you're not gonna get that on many other podcasts. Um look, I, I do think it's very interesting that Brazil only has one entry. Um he's around a sixteen to one shot as well. Uh Pura Groach obviously uh won the Boodles um or trained this lad to win the Boodles. Now this is a race that uh, well, the Liffey Handicap at the Dublin Racing Festival, it's a race I always look at in relation to the Coral Cup. Um, and that's where, as I said, an epic song and faster slow. It was actually just a coincidence that they're both trained by Martin Brassel. But both of those horses had very quiet runs, but you almost did not come off the bridle. Um, because it's so easy at Leopardstown to find trouble over two miles in those big fields, especially in a race like the Liffey Handicap. And if you just watch the way Brazil ran, he just hacked around hurdle to hurdle, no problem, and it kind of came home in its own time. So he's, you're going to see nowhere pulled up nowhere in his last three runs. But you have to remember, this is a horse that won a premier handicap at Galway, uh, beating a very well handicapped horse in teed up of Emmett Mullins's only in August. So it like the ability is still there. Um. He's beaten 35 lengths by Lord Erskine. He, I think he finished 12th or 13th. Um, he was on the outer and 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 out out the back. There's a what's what position is that again? <laughs> out out the, the back and then the position. outer in the in the in the not off position. That's uh, the, came, the yeah, came, coming, is it? Exactly. Yeah. Um. Two to uh, rule two one two a doesn't really uh you, no, you, you avoid no, it by that one. Against, there's nothing against riding eight deep. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so um, look, he came home in his own time, but like he's only literally out for a hack, and this horse has plenty of ability. And I wouldn't, he's just the type of horse, he has the profile that he, former Cheltenham Festival winner in the green and gold. Um, of course, a quiet run last time out, but it wouldn't worry me in the slightest. He's around 16 20 to 1. I'd keep a very close eye on him. Um, but the other one I'm going to go with, I'll, I'll back Brazil probably, and I, I will also back built by Ballymore, as I said. Um, well behind Slade Steele on his uh, second start to over hurdles. Um, that kind of kick-started the season this year, but it's been so impressive in beating Native Speaker. And then what he did at punches down, as you said, under 12 stone, and he just looked like a horse that was going the right way very, very quickly. Uh, in here off 139. Look, I wouldn't say he'd be out of place in a Ballymore, um, especially in a weak year. And if I think that, uh, I'm not saying he'd win a Ballymore now, but I think he would. He'd give it a good oh, go. And if he, uh, oh, sorry, a Ballymore, a Bering Bingham, a Bering Bingham. Sorry, Dak, you're right. Uh, I don't think he'd be a million miles off going well in a race like that. And for me, I think he's worth um, a punt as well. So it'd be built by Ballymore in Brazil, the ones to watch for me. And then Dak, you're forty to one on Western Fold, yeah. Oh, if he turns up here, it'd be keen now. If, if not, I, I'll side with you with built by Ballymore. But if Western mm. Fold turns up here. Yeah. Fill your boots. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Well, we're jumping on to the next race deck, um, which is the grand annual. And this is a this is a nicer spreadsheet. The chasers, the chasers done me a lot of favors here. They're, they're, the chase races were a lot quicker to go through because there's not as many unexposed uh, horses in them. Um look, a few uh, horses here with single entries, dancing on my own for Henry de Bromhead, uh, Enna Scary for Barry Connell. Well, half of South Dublin been on him deck. That's that's usually what you would say about him. Anyone uh, South of Log. Exactly. Yeah. Pat Daru for Gavin Cromwell. Um, a horse who's almost afraid of his own shadow, but is clearly blessed with a lot of ability. Uh Pat's choice as well. Solness, the folks tiara, and another Gavin Cromwell horse. Uh, a horse that you know your very well, deck, the king of PRs. Um, with your with a little stunt on the other podcast uh, uh, last year, which was brilliant. Um look, this is a I think this race was better on the new course. It's definitely safer on the old course. Um, but is there many horses in here that that you think, from from the an Irish point of view, that 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 could get involved? Like I think the favourite right now, around nine to two, five to one, is my mate Mozzie, who is a novice of one hundred and fifty. Uh, he's gotten four pounds. Um, they probably left a grade one behind. I did say that on Stevens's day or Boxing Day at Leopard Sound when Fasso Vega underperformed. Um, but maybe with a view to this race, but that's a that's an awfully lofty mark for for my it, mate Mozzie. Do you not think? Yeah, it is. But I'm not sure how many are overly well handicapped in here. And mm. 
you know, I, I, I'd love to see my mate Mazzy coming down the hill the way Belvano did, you know. Um, yeah. <laughs> what, what what we've seen from Keith Donahue this season, is particularly in Cheltenham, you know, the way he's, he's sat so coyly on a horse. And, like, the way he won at Cheltenham on my mate Mazzy, like, it, it will be it will be something to watch at, at the festival if he could pull it off. And I think the horse has to be delivered like that. And if he done it on, if, if he gave a ride like that on the big stage, he might start getting the, the credit he deserves. Um, mm. Because I think him and Jack Kennedy have been the, the two best jockeys in the world this season. Um, but he will need a lot of luck. But the yeah. horse has loads of ability. But at 150, it, it's, it's tough, isn't it? Um, Sam Raw, you called months ago. Uh, we had a discussion when we were covering <laughs> yeah. the, the tap for the... the Dan Moore, Dan Moore. And, and yeah. you, I, I thought he'd win the Dan Moore. You said it was this. You, you, you were right that day. Um, and look, one five two. He seems to be just sitting on that mark, though, doesn't he? He's, like they haven't got it down. Yeah, he's not a horse he can drop, though, is it? Like he, they no. tried the, the Irish handicapper dropped him from. Like he's a peak of one five three over fences. He's one fifty in Ireland. He's gotten his two pounds. Like you could say it's harsh, but. What, like if he's good enough to run in grade ones and I think he is like I know he's been you know he's been tailed off from the first fence this season um, it's a carbon copy of what Willie Mullins did with Aramon over hurdles a couple yeah. of years ago um, and Aramon was a quite a big gamble in the county hurdle that was actually funny enough won by Sanra and he was second to him so I think that's where they're, they're coming from with Sanra I think you're going to see a majorly improved performance yeah, well, look at, at at this level, every pound matters, and you know, just to I just remind you of when the same connections. Well, the owners went to appeal over the was it Dame de Compiègne, Dame de, de Compagnie before she won the Carl Cup. I think before she won the Carl Cup over mm-hmm. a pound or two pound, and and she won it by a short head, um, like <laughs> every, every you know. <laughs> so <laughs> the, the, these boys will scrap for every pound. Um, <laughs> look, he, he definitely has a chance. Um, and it's scary. Uh, I haven't seen a lot of him. He doesn't stay any further than this, I don't think, or doesn't stay well enough over further. Um, hard though, hard to. I can't make a strong case from. Couldn't neither could no. I. No. Um, Safarer, he was second to Quilixios at, at night. Um, he won a beginners by about 40 lengths after 100 yard came down at the last when he was gone yeah. to beat him well. He also has a play entry. Pat Deru, he's four pounds better off with Midara. Um, he's two lengths to find. He's only a seven year old. And Solness is eight pounds better off with Midara. This is on the Leperstown runs. Right. He's six lengths to find. I think Solness could try. I, I think Midara's going to be very hard to be here. Um, if he runs, I think the plate is the first preference for Madara. For Madara. Yeah, they're they're thinking yeah. they're going up and trip. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah look, that, which is wild. Been... I thought, but look, fair enough. If that's what they. Yeah, I, I'd be I'd be surprised at that. Now I'd be coming here, but if you're that would tell me they're worried about is he handicapped to the hilt now because that's where you find it is going up and trip. Yeah. You, you well, change he's a... something. Yeah, he's a five-year-old as well. Dr. Dino's tend to be very, very quick. You don't see many Dr. Dino's stay three miles, never more, like two and a half miles maybe, but they're, a lot of them are two-milers, um, that, just to put that out there. But anyway. I think it's going to be tough to be. I think Solness is not going to be far away. Mm. But I, I'm a big fan of Pinkerton. He's in our air off 138. Mm. Uh, he was beat eight lengths in the county hurdle off 141. You know, we, we, we've we said all year on here, all season, that, you know, as a rule of thumb, they, they might be £7 better over fences. Um, yeah. He, he, he did run his race in beginner's races, but he probably needed it to be getting in here. Um, he was struck into a tour, let's just put a line through that race. I think Peter Pinkerton could go very, very close here. That I, I'd imagine he's a decent price. I, I didn't actually look at it. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're looking around twenty five to one. So yeah, yeah. Mm. I think Pickerton. Yeah, I I think he's one that could is probably going under the radar a little bit. He's a horse with a lot of ability. He said he was mm. only beat eight lengths off one hundred forty one, um, in the county, and he's he's three pound lower of our fences, and we probably haven't seen what he's really capable of our fences. Mm. 
no chance that Noel made steps him up. He does have an entry in the play. He and does he has won that with road to respect. But do you think he's you do think he goes here? I am um, I tell you what, if if Pinkerton and Madara go to the plate and Solness wins this, unless my mate Mazzy is delivered on the line to beat him. Mm. I, I, about, I hope Pinkerton goes here. Now that Madara, you say Madara's gone to play, I, I, I'd say Pinkerton beats Solness straight forward. Okay. And <laughs> and I know you were saying Pat Daru, uh, they're they're getting weight off Pat Daru. You have to remember that, that he was second taking half defences home with him at Leopard Sound. Like he's not a competent jumper. But if well, he, you know, that, that means he's no hope in this race. Yeah, you can't not jump in the grand annual, I suppose. Well, unless you're a Dino Blue, she nearly won it by not jumping up the home straight. But yeah, but um, yeah, she, she was she beaten a great because, one there. Beaten because exactly she, because she couldn't jump. Yeah, and and going back to uh, last year, um, Mascada wouldn't interest you off one fifty, just a pound higher. Like she has been disappointing this season, now, hasn't she? She has, yeah. No, 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 no worries. Uh, well, I'll keep this simple. As I said, Deck, you, you, you said it earlier. Um, I was on the San Raw train for quite a while. It's not my style to be putting up handicap in handicappers in January for for the Cheltenham Festival. I just thought that the way this horse was running, though, in graded races, um, it it was a carbon copy of what Willie was doing over hurdles with the likes of Aramon and. Uh, Sharja and Wicklow Brave and you know all those type of horses and for me he's trying to do it over fences to see if it works he has a nine-year-old here in San Ra who I think holds plenty of ability um like if you go back and watch his Dan Moore uh run like he should have won that half the straight um I don't know like it was an absolute fine ride <laughs> it, 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 for what they were trying to achieve and um, mm. but like he should have won that that Dan Moore and um if he shows up in the same form, I know he has a play entry. I don't think he's a two and a half miler. I think he's just an out and out two miler. Um, albeit he was only beaten a short distance by Banbridge and Aintree in a grade one. If the ground is somewhat decent and he comes back to that form that even that he showed in the Dan Moore, Dan Moore um, I think he's going to take a fair bit of beating. Um, even seven, eight to one, it's fine by me. I think he'll he'd be very hard to beat. Uh, Pat Drew would. If, even in a match bet for Gavin Cromwell's horses, I think Pat DeRue with a, with a clean round would beat my mate Mozzie. I think 150 is an awful lot of weight uh, for a novice. Um, and and the Arkle's weak. I, I, I don't see why he wouldn't. Yeah. Like, if he thought he was that good running the Arkle, uh, it's a is very... It, it's a, I believe so, yeah. Yeah, I think so. But I think the, the plan is to go here. Uh, but yeah, no, we'll, I'll be sticking with San Ra. You'll be with Pinkerton deck, yeah? Pinkerton, yeah. Yeah. I'll be, be... Look, I'm... I'm, I'm Still shocked you said Madara's not coming here. Yeah. You had me worried that I'm making stuff up, but I'm I'm fairly sure I'm not. Yeah, I I don't I don't I think they're making a mistake there. Mm. Um he's only a five year old as well, isn't he? Yeah, oh it's brilliant. There should have horses on the on the bumper card or in the bumper and the DRF that were older than him and Madara was yeah. winning the handicap chase. And, and you know what? It, it was brilliant to come over and see him win. Like good for racing. It's been Dublin brilliant. Race Festival needed that, yeah. Midar the Dublin Race and Festival needed, and Mar uh, Midara and Marsh Wren has been yeah. really enjoyable to see. Mm. And uh, but I think that's what we like in this country. We, we do, we do like a radar, like you know, and back them, <laughs> back them, yeah, exactly. So you back them, yeah, you back them, Just back them. <laughs> yeah, um, absolutely. But like, it was a bold decision to go to come to a festival as competitive as that and, and to, win, to win well, you know. Only a five year old. But yeah. Come here and, and and I think he'd be so hard to beat in this. Having yeah, won no. at the course already this season, I think he'd be very, very hard to beat. Yeah. He can't be handicapped at a hill being a five year old. You would have thought not. No, you would have thought not. And the way he, he was a commanding winner at Leper oh. as well. Like he wasn't he wasn't like you know, it was no fluke, he destroyed them. So yeah. like, you know, you would have thought you know. And it's not like they, they they haven't looked at the weights because they're only out to say yeah. okay there's there's a there's a big swing with Solness there or there's enough of a swing for him to get closer. Solness mm. is only he's just only a six year old I think is he? Uh, okay, yeah, he's a young horse. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I I think it's madness not to come here with with, with But look, we're not covering the the British trained horses, so <laughs> uh, yeah. 
Pinkerton. Not for the, yeah, not for the, so Pinkerton and San Ra for the grand annual uh, for us then. Right, guys, moving on. Um, what we're going to do here is because this is um, running a little bit longer than we thought. So what we're going to do is we're going to switch this uh, up. We're going to take two podcasts. Uh, so the, what you've just heard here is going to obviously cover the Tuesday and Wednesday from the old course. The next podcast is going to recover uh, the Thursday and the Friday on the new course. Um, so what we're going to do just before we wrap up this first podcast deck, you're going to take us through some Clonmel selections. Um, so oh, yeah. obviously we have the yeah. Thursday card um, from Clonmel. We couldn't not give Clonmel a little bit of love because that's what this podcast is all about at the end of the day. Um, I've been a bit of a, a bad bad guy here i've um it's taken me a while to set up this podcast so deck it's all on you the pressure is all on you here to to take us through the clan mill card nice and quickly and um hopefully give us a nice double or a treble if that's possible so go on ahead i look pre- pressures for tires and we <laughs> left clan mill till the end of the show because uh we know that's all anyone's interested in never mind exactly. that festival. Never, never mind the punches town trials in two weeks um <laughs> <laughs> the the four so the first handicap is it a handicap chase over two miles seven 222 and um, i like starlight cat out in here of 84 seven year old zero from five of offenses and um, but was runner up in a second handicap run off 83 the last day chasing home the well handicap st dennis as well that was at navin you have to remember st dennis as well followed up off a penalty um only about three or four days later so um, and starlight cat out is getting to grips with things and definitely has a big big chance here and 332 there's a handicap portal over two miles uh look we talked about the I, i've mentioned this mary a good few times uh magdalene the she she finally won the last day it was a maiden at limerick and um, she had a rating of 101 they bumped her up a pound for that so she's off 102 uh i think she's the type of mare that when she wins one she'll win two and uh now that she's finally gone in i think she'll take a handicap uh then at 442 a handicap portal over two miles two and a half furlongs mentioned the earlier and the tranquil c mm. in here off 105. he was second off 101 on his handicap debut Um he was behind eagles rain as we mentioned earlier four pound maybe a little bit harsh um I think he's a massive chance though. Um I do like one other one in here who could spoil the party and is an each way price, Glenn Cork Valley, eight off eighty five. An eye catcher on handicap debut. Um didn't look off the following day, which was quite a surprise, but I'd expect massive improvement tomorrow. Uh, I'd have it between them. Very good. So there's the three races. Yeah, Tranquil see us. Obviously, if both of us took an eye to Eagles Rain and the Boodles. Tranquil C off 105 would have to be um would have to be quite interesting. Uh, he's around a five to two chance um in that four forty-two. Uh deck, just before we wrap up top thirty-four then uh covering the first two days of the handicaps of Cheltenham Festival, do we have a nap of the Ooh. old course tap, I suppose, is what I'm gonna say. Um Ooh. we were both quite close with Cossack Cossack Chat and the Jack. I know, but it's such a it. tricky one, isn't it? Yeah. No, we don't have to. We don't need to force it because I know yeah. for sure we have one in, on on the Friday that's coming up. Uh, so, well, look, if you we were to put one up, you were on, well. What what would you be most confident about from the handicaps from on the old cars? On the handicaps, um, to be brutally honest, by the way Willie Mullins campaigned his seasoned hurdlers for those handicap hurdles and what he's done with San Ra, I'd be very giddy on him. Um, I'd, I'd be very, very giddy on him. Uh, and I think Bill by Ballymore, as I said, could possibly be a graded horse. I know you like Bill by Ballymore, but you did put up Western Fold. Um, and I'm keen on Western Fold if he turns up. See, this this is the problem we have. <laughs> but yeah. we don't have to be... Look, we can put up a nap each um, if that if that suits you. Um, yeah, yeah, you know, that, 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 that's what I'm saying, yeah. We just put up yeah. one each. Okay, let's do that then. Well, I'm gonna go with San Ra and feel free if you like something in the in the Grand Manual, be my guest. I'm happy to take you on, but it'd be San Ra and the Grand Manual for me. No, I, I wouldn't be very confident in the Grand Manual. Look, I, I'm keen on Western Fold, and I'm keen on another way you're thinking. I'm not sure to do them. I got to turn up, but um, I I I'd be giddy if if Western Fold is declared for the Coral Cup. 
Western fall for the Carl Cup. You make me giddy about that. <laughs> and even uh, possibly Brazil. However, uh, that's going to bring us to an end of top 34. You will have top 35 on your devices uh, straight after. So don't be worrying. We're not cut. We're not going to uh, leave you guys short here. Uh, but very much appreciate you guys for listening and uh, just keep subscribing, keep sharing, keep commenting. It's, it does mean the world to us. And we've been very taken aback by uh, the, the support, I suppose, that, that we were receiving from it. Uh, oh, we've actually been past. blown away. Like it, it's been unreal to, um, you know, we, we just started this. We, we kind of made a plan maybe only last September and got going at the beginning of October. And it, yeah. it's been something else. The feedback has been unreal. Like we've, you know, so many people in Britain who are like looking forward to midweek Irish racing now. The race courses that have been in touch with us. We yeah. even have uh, possibly her most loyal follower lives in the States and didn't know um, Irish jump racing existed before this. And it, it's actually blowing our mind. And um, like Punchestown have, you know, Shauna is, is very, very good at her job. And um dave knows what we're doing and you know thanks for uh like the support we're getting from punches town yeah we're promoting these race courses because we love it but we weren't expecting the feed get feedback we're getting also um peter our fairy house uh he he's exactly. tagged us a lot and you know has thanked us for supporting our race racing leperstown and ace have given us tickets and uh it, it's just been it, it's been great and I, i've totally enjoyed it andy I'm sure you nah, yeah you put you i couldn't have said it better myself uh but look we're not gonna be gone for long we'll be straight back now with top 35 and uh, the irish chapman weights part two but until then guys that was top 34 thank you very very much and we'll talk to you soon bye bye cheers